The decree was buried in a 48-page government publication. It comes directly from the desk of Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro. The vaguely worded decree says the government of Venezuela can force both public and private sector employees to work in the country's fields for periods of at least 60 days. This work period can be extended, the decree says, if circumstances merit. Starting with the late president, the socialist Hugo Chavez, Venezuela nationalized many companies, foreign and domestic. Many of those companies have shut down or are no longer producing at the level they once did, which has created shortages of many products, including food staples. This business leader says President Maduro's decree is misguided. This is the closest thing to slavery we've had, he says. Amnesty International says the decree effectively amounts to forced labor and calls it unlawful. Some Venezuelan workers have been at odds with the government for years. They claim tight currency controls, restrictions on imports and expropriations of companies have disrupted the labor market. Former employees of Polar Enterprises, one of the country's largest food and beverage producers, protested against the government for weeks after part of the company had to shut down for lack of raw materials. About 10,000 workers have been laid off due to the shutdown of Polar Enterprises' beer production facilities like this one. Those who have lost their jobs are not going quietly. They have been protesting on the streets, saying the government is not only affecting businesses, but also killing jobs. We just want to live in peace, working and producing for our country and our families, this protesting worker says. He may soon be producing for his country, not at the work site of his choice, but at a government-run farm. Rafael Romo, CNN, Caracas. Erica Guevara is America's director of Amnesty International. She joins me via Skype from Mexico City. Erica, thank you for being with us. Let's start with this issue of forced labor. What are you hearing from your people on the ground? How widespread is this? Well, thanks, Maggie. Uh, uh, unfortunately, as what is been happening these days in Venezuela, we are not necessarily sure how this decree is going to be implemented. What we know is that it is going to be implemented in the context of the state of emergency that President Maduro declared a few weeks ago back in May. And it's very concerning because we know that what this decree and this state of emergency are doing is giving more power to the armed forces. And now, of course, in a situation that is quite critical in Venezuela with the shortage of food, medicine, uh, the polarization of society, and more important, the hunger that people are suffering and experiencing, the, the context is quite adverse. So this decree is just adding to the top of issues that the government is doing to try to uh, repair a crisis that is beyond uh, simple uh, steps like this degree of forcing uh, employees to go and work on the fields. Mm -hmm. Erica, um, and we have seen that firsthand from both Rafael and, and Paula Newton, my colleagues who've been on the ground there. We know that there are these food shortages, medical supplies are low, hospitals in terrible disrepair. Are humanitarian groups being allowed access in the country to try to help? I was myself in Venezuela a few weeks ago. I interviewed people in the lines waiting for food for hours. They were waiting for basic food. In most cases, people were not accessing this food, even spending 12, 13 hours in a line. We went into hospitals and we were able to witness the level of destruction that exists in this hospital. I visited uh, the pediatric hospital in Caracas, one of the most important hospitals across the country. I mean, people still go to this, to this hospital coming from different parts of the country precisely because the situation is even worse in many states in the country. And unfortunately, what we are seeing is that the government is resistant to any attempt to address the humanitarian crisis. Many groups Humanitarian groups, including some UN agencies, have offered some support, but the government is resistant to accept any support because for them, accepting the assistance, the humanitarian assistance, is in some way recognizing that the crisis is being created by, by the government. Erica, so important uh, to raise awareness of what is going on on the ground there. Thank you so much for joining us.